Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes and welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. If I sound a little nasal today, I do apologize. Mix allergies with having a cold for the last few days and that's where this leaves me today. But I am here to surge forward to bring you the best photographic entertainment possible or something like that. But anyway, today we're gonna to talk about mirrorless cameras. And if you're not familiar with mirrorless cameras, some of you may be, uh, this is something that, I'll be honest, really, for me, didn't have much place in my life. Um, I've got cameras that work just fine. I didn't see much of the advantage until recently. And I picked this camera, which is a Sony NEX7, and I wanted to share this with you because I've kind of been converted there. I believe are some really nice things about having a mirrorless design that I want to share with you today. Um, like I said, this is uh, not a new camera. This has been around at least a year, probably a little longer. And I think the rumor is that Sony are going to have some that come out. So this is really not a camera pitch, but I am showing it to you because um, it's just got me rather excited about the whole thing. The reason I ended up purchasing this camera is uh, when I do video projects, I have a Sony camera that I use and I needed a Sony camera that was small uh, handheld that I could be able to do some b-roll some city scape kinds of things and not have to carry a whole lot of equipment around with me and the specs that I read is that the Sony NEX series performed very well in low light uh, they were very ergonomic cameras which as you can see and I thought maybe this is the one well I ordered it and not only am I extremely impressed with the video capabilities in these things but the still photography aspect of it I thought this is going in the show um, it's really amazing so come on over with me to the bench and I want to take a look at this let's break it down and I want to talk about what I think makes mirrorless cameras actually very interesting for photographers so come on over and let's have a look Okay, so having a look at the NEX7 from Sony, and uh, I want to show you, first of all, here's one of the cool things in general about most mirrorless cameras is the form factor. You can see that there's just, you know, it's like a sensor with a camera built around it. Um, you know, there's, there's very little mechanics in here, you know, much like a DSLR where you take your lens off and you see the mirror and that's how you do your focusing, etc. And the mirrorless cameras have a much different design and they're much different, um, you know, approach to this. In fact, if I take the lens off, you can see that that's what your camera is down to. And you can see the sensor right there uh, in front of the lens flange. And, you know, you'll have to be careful with these as far as dust goes, fingerprints, you, you know, be very careful changing your lens. But there's an extra effect um, with the mirror, or excuse me, the mirror, with the sensor being that close to the lens flange is this. Um, various focal lengths, various manufacturers, various camera companies, as long as you can find an adapter, you could put just about any lens you've ever wanted to on here, which means you could put your old Nikon lenses on here, you can use Canon lenses, you can use, um, for me, and in fact, I'm, I'm filming with one right now, but here's another lens that I love. This is one of my favorite lenses ever. This is a, this is a Canon FD series. Um, um, 85 millimeter 1.2 and you know they have an EF version of this but you know when when Canon moved to autofocus their lenses went completely obsolete well I actually have an adapter and I can use this on this camera uh, the first part of this video where you were watching me set things up was filmed with this lens uh, this is one of my favorite lenses of all time the other cool thing too is there's another one of my favorite lenses this is a Voigtlander this came out a few years ago this is a 15 millimeter so you know on a 35 millimeter camera it's pretty wide but you know if you can find an adapter for it and they do make one for uh, they call this an M39 mount so old Leica lenses uh, you can use your fed lenses off your Russian, um, you know, 35 millimeter cameras. It's a 50 millimeter. It's pretty amazing, and you can have a lot of fun with these too. Anyway, just screw that in there basically, and then attach this to the camera, which is extremely easy. Just want to be careful not to touch the sensor. You just match up the red dot with the white dot, and give it a turn, and you're on. And tell me that isn't a cool form factor for a camera. Now, when you do mount lenses from other cameras, you're probably going to lose some functionality in them. And one of the things you're going to lose, um, particularly with this lens, is the autofocus. But that's not a problem. And I'll show you how the finder works here in a second. Um, but manual focus is not an issue uh, for me on this. Um, unfortunately, depending on, you know, if you're using Canon EF mounts or some of the newer Nikon mounts, if they don't have an aperture ring where you can manually change the aperture, you're not going to be able to change the aperture and you're going to be stuck at whatever the widest setting is. Still, a little bit of a trade-off, but, uh, you know, to be able to go back and use old 35 millimeter lenses, and some of these are really, really nice lenses, you get great results. Okay, speaking of, let's go ahead and turn this on, and I'm going to show you basically how these cameras work here. What you're going to be dealing with is an electronic viewfinder, which is what you're looking at there. There's no mirror in this camera, so there's no physical way of seeing the actual scene via a mirror um, into the viewfinder. So you have a choice of two electronic viewfinders, one on the back here and then the other one. Basically when you put your eye over here, and notice I did it with my hand, it, it knows which one you're using. So all you have to do is pull it up to your eye and it will switch over to the electronic viewfinder, um, the smaller one. Uh, 
what I like about this camera is that all the controls here, it's really easy and I honestly, I just set this camera to manual and I control everything for my scene. May not be the fastest way to work, but it works really well for me. So my focus is, and my aperture with this particular lens, we're using the Voigtlander, are both mechanical, so I'll use these up here. Normally the lens would be done with this, this, uh, this button here. My shutter speed is controlled with this, uh, this knob here. So I can go through the one on the left and you know, it lights up what, what shutter speed you're looking at and gives you a preview. Uh, the screen isn't bad. It's not the greatest thing in the world. It's not as good as actually seeing it. In low light, it's horrendous. Um, it gets so much noise in here. What's interesting is the camera performs very well in low light. I don't know why, maybe because it's having to drive the LCD separately. Um, and what's nice is this one does pull out, so if you're shooting video or something, you can, you can adjust it for your, your point of view. Um, but anyway, the, you know, the LCD in low light is horrid, and there's just no way of getting around it. You're going to be used to it. Um, ISO is adjustable here on top of the mode switch, and you just turn it, and it basically starts going. You can also customize on this particular camera any of these to do any function. So if I'd rather have the ISO be the top left knob or the top right, I can reassign it, which is really cool. In fact, that's almost a complaint about this camera is it's so customizable. It's really easy to forget where you've set things, so I kind of restored it back to the default. Um, one other thing that's really nice here is there is a little button in front next to the shutter dial. And when I put this on, I can, I can go through, I can deal with my focus settings, where that range is. I can get, I love this, you get a real micro control of white balance. So if I use the left knob, I can go from auto to custom um, to, you know, flash. We can go to fluorescent daylight and so on and so forth. So you can set your, your um, and on any of these settings, what's really cool, we'll go back to auto, So I can use the knob on the right to fine tune this in the color spectrum here. So it's really nice. You can really narrow in on your white balance. Now, if you're shooting raw, that doesn't make any difference in the world because it won't record it. You'll end up being, you know, you're not committed to white balance when you shoot raw. Uh, but if you are shooting video or if you are shooting JPEGs, that is a very nice touch to have to be able to do that in the camera, particularly for video. Another thing that I really like about this, we're gonna hit this again, you can adjust the dynamic range that, that of what we're having, what you're seeing. So if I need level five or so, you know, and it gives you a little histogram where you can see on that. I'm not showing a great photo to illustrate this, but uh, you can adjust the dynamic range. I can also come in here and this is nice too, it's really hard to see, but there's these shooting modes. Um, and right now we are set to neutral. I can set this to vivid. I can set it to standard. I can set it to sepia, black and white. Anyway, it's really nice to be able to preview these. Another thing I should say about this is once again, this does not commit anything to the raw photo. I wish there was a way to use the XMP data to at least you know, put what you did into the raw photo, but it doesn't. So this is again only applicable if you're shooting JPEG or video. So another thing I want to show you real quick are the menu settings in here. And as you can see, this looks more like a smartphone than it does a camera. It's very different than what Canon and Nikon do with their DSLR layouts. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really easy and intuitive and it's designed for mom and dad who want to sit here and, you know, maybe not know exactly what they're doing with these, uh, be able to find things, LCD display, drive mode, flash mode, etc. There are a lot of options in here. It just takes a little bit of getting used to if you're coming from a DSLR into things because I don't really think mom and dad would want to go in and care, you know, if the curtain sink was adjusted a certain way with flash photography I and mean, that's just not going to happen. So, um, but anyway, I really do like it how it's laid out. It just takes a little getting used to to figure out where these things are. But overall, I really do like the design of this camera. I think it's got some amazing things on it. Um, you know, if for nothing else, for the fact that you can actually use the manual focus lenses on older 35 millimeter cameras. Let me show you one other thing that's really cool with this. It's harder to see, uh, let's see if I can get this adjusted. It's gonna be harder to see because this is a wide angle and most everything will be in focus. But see how the red dots start picking up there? This is what Sony calls peaking. You can see them on those beer bottles back there. Not that I would keep beer in the house, right? Okay, so this is called peaking, and basically it's a little focus assist. And when something starts coming into focus and the edges become contrasty, you can assign this to be a color. So this could be white, it could be red, or I think orange is the third color. So I turn these red, and this is basically your manual focus assist. So if you're using something like this wide angle where it's really going to be hard to see what's fuzzy and what's really clear, uh, that will tell you. And when I back this off, you can see all the red goes away, so it's not in focus. So anyway, very, very useful, and that for me, the peaking feature mixed with the manual focus lenses, um, just like with some of the stuff I use for, for video production, uh, Sony's brought this into their line for, um, for mirrorless camera production. 
like I said, there are other companies out there that make these. Uh, Panasonic has some wonderful cameras in varying price points. Um, you know, some of them may be better than this. The reason I went with Sony is because I needed a match for some of the video work I was doing. Um, am I disappointed? No, absolutely not. I love this. So for me, um, it's totally worth it. I, I, I'm really happy I bought it mainly for the ability to use your manual focus lenses. Uh, the old Russian Fed lenses are kind of interesting. One of my favorite lens lines ever was the Canon line for their FD lenses, which pretty much have been obsolete. You couldn't get adapters to adapt these to the newer line of Canon autofocus lenses, uh, mainly because the distance between the film plane and the lens, you just couldn't do it. Um, so anyway, so it's really nice to be able to give some of these a second life. And in a minute, when I close this out, this is the lens I'm using on my on the camera we're using right now. I'm switching from a 50 to an 85. Now you do have a crop factor. It's an APS-C APS size sensor. And so that's one thing to consider. So the 85 len millimeter lens, it's a, still a beautiful look, but you are cropped in on it. Um, but it's still usable. You just need to move the camera further back. That's all. Uh, but anyway, great stuff. Mix that with the uh, with the peaking rangefinder aspect of it, and you've got yourself a camera um, that's capable of, of quite a bit of damage, so to speak. Um, like I said, there's other brands of these too. There's Panasonic. Uh, they make several that are really wonderful, and there's other companies that are getting into the micro four thirds um, thing. One thing you should know is that Sony, um, and this may be a negative about this camera, I don't know, your mileage may vary, but they use their own lens mount. So there's a micro four thirds lens mount, and then there's the Sony NEX lens mount. They called it E-mount, and it's very similar, and again, it's no shortage of adapters and things like that, it's just, but if you have a Panasonic already and you wanted to get into the Sony, you would have to use different adapters. You could not repurpose what you've already got. So anyway, that is the Sony NEX7. The kit lens is outstanding. I didn't really even get much into this. We can cover it in another episode. Um, extremely sharp, beautiful, nice color retention. Um, surprisingly good for what essentially, if you buy the kit, costs you $150. Uh, it's, it's unbelievably good. Okay, so that is a quick overview of mirrorless cameras, and namely we're talking about the Sony NEX7. Um, you know, do I think these are an interesting camera that have, you know, value and a place in your camera bag? Absolutely. I think that they're very revolutionary in the terms of versatility, in terms of form factor, in terms of performance and what they're able to do um, in such a small package is amazing. And I think the price point on these is pretty good right now. Uh, depending on your needs and, and budget, you can get in there for well under a thousand US dollars. In fact, I think the NEX5 body retails for 500 or so right now. I think they're very much worth the money you'd pay for them. Um, however, do I think they're perfect? No, not by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, like I said, it's kind of like taking um, you know the best aspects of a DSLR and the best aspects of a point and shoot and throwing them into a blender. And unfortunately, they've been thrown into a blender, and now it's time to, you know, start cooking on the on the manufacturer's side of things a little bit. And they've made some great strides on this. Um, they've had some firmware updates. There's still some little kludgy things here, and you know, like one of our viewers um, and I were discussing on the website, uh, it's it's a little more like operating a computer than it is an actual camera. But the results are fantastic. I think it's a very interesting camera to use. I just wouldn't have it as my main camera yet, um, but uh, you know, it's pretty close. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for today. Um, I will leave all the show notes, uh, links to things, all in the website, on the uh, webpage there. So if you go to theartofphotography.tv, you can find all that stuff. And once again, my name is Ted Forbes. I will see you next week in another episode. And thanks again for watching. See ya.